Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how I painted this beautiful hair munching on a clover. The reference photo is from Pixabay and I am using soft pastels and pastel pencils on Hanimo velour paper. It's 30 per 40 centimeters in size. I also have a foam board that I glued the velour paper to, so I used also a pH neutral glue for that, just to make sure that everything is archival and that nothing yellows or fades over time. The first thing I do is block in the ear values. I add the light ridge of the hair along the ear, but I will be using very few pure whites on this piece. The lightest shades that I use have a color to them, from very light peachy color to light yellow. I went for the reds and yellows in the coat because with reds I wanted to contrast the greens and yellows would tie the hair into the background without making him look strange on the green, as yellow is one of the colors that makes up green. I also used the dark bluish and greenish grays for the darkest hairs and in the shadow areas and very few black as I preferred that each area even if it looks very dark to have a color to it. I am constantly rubbing in the pastels into the paper as this will allow me to layer many more layers on top. Also, I have a background in place first so that I can draw the hair and have the looser hairs overlapping the background. I am gradually building up the layers working on one area at a time. I create a palette that I use for the hair and use the same colors to keep it looking consistent. I've been asked in the comments what pastels I use. I am using different brands, Rembrandt's, Schmincke's, Kochinor Extra Soft, Windsor & Newton and Daler Rowney's. All of them make different marks on the paper depending on the softness. From the ones that I have, Schmincke's are the softest ones, but they also crumble sometimes. Nonetheless, even if they do crumble, I keep all the tiny shards to create sharp tiny marks, which is very useful when working on fur. Here's a tip that I also wanted to share with you. As I work, I constantly walk a couple of steps away from the piece to see how it looks from afar. This helps me judge if I have made any mistakes proportion-wise and see the values better. Also, taking the artwork to a mirror and looking at its reflection is another trick that will help you see mistakes. On the fur, I start with the darker layers first and build up towards the lighter ones. Then I alternate between the values to give it a more realistic look. As I want the hair to maintain the upper part in focus and the rest of the body slightly blurry, I add more detail to the head and to the shoulders than to the body itself. Thank you. 
For the eye, I am using bright colors to give that appearance of the orb and to create a convincing highlight. I am using very few white and different blues and purples. For the contours, I use pastel pencils as they have a narrower tip and they are easier to handle in such detailed areas than soft pastels are. I am building finer detail with pastel pencils. I use mainly Carbothellos, but I also have a full set of Kohinoor Jacondas and some Faber Castells and their vents. The white pencil doesn't layer up very well over the dark areas, as there are many layers of pastel, so I use a Rembrandt white pastel that has a sharper edge. For the flower, I layer in with a soft schminky pastel. As you can see, there are some small shards that have crumbled slightly, and I add the details with the pencils. With a very warm light yellow, I create sharper marks on the fur. For the body that is slightly out of focus, I am using broader marks than for the face and shoulders of the hair. I start with my darks and move to lights to go back to the darks again, using the same palette and following the direction of the fur growth. Finally, I add the grass blades in front of the hair and blur them out. For the whiskers, I first mark them with a charcoal pencil and then add the white lines with a sharper edge of a Rembrandt. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see how I create my out of focus backgrounds. You can also find this tutorial in real time with a voiceover on my Patreon channel. So I hope you like this tutorial here on YouTube and if you did, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel and I will be seeing you in the next video. Thank you for watching, bye!